Hello Year 3, I am back to read the next couple of chapters of Crindle Cracks, chapter 32 and 33, maybe even 34 as well. So the last chapter we read was a very short one, it was only that long. Um, Ruskin was sitting on the curb outside his house feeling very sorry for himself. Um, he was quite upset that he felt he hadn't got any friends anymore. He felt like he couldn't be friends with Corky anymore. And just then he heard the de-boing of Elvis. So chapter 32. Elvis stood there bouncing his ball. Behind Elvis was Sparky Walnut. Not avoiding me, are you? asked Elvis. No, Ruskin said. What? said Elvis. I can't hear you. Your voice is such a squeaky whisper. The breeze just blows it away. I'm not avoiding you, Ruskin said a little louder. You called me a bad actor, Elvis said, and that annoyed me, didn't it, Sparky? Yes, sir. It's about time you found out once and for all, said Elvis, pointing at Ruskin with one hand and bouncing the ball with the other, that I can do what I like. Right, Sparky? Yes, sir. So you're going to get a scalp scratching, said Elvis, grabbing Ruskin and holding him tightly. What a muscleless, short, thin, squeaky voiced splinter you are. And with that, Elvis started to scratch Ruskin's scalp, scratching him so hard and so fast that Ruskin felt as if his hair was being pulled out by its roots. Stop scratching me, cried Ruskin. Can't hear you, said Elvis, scratching him even harder. You're scalping me, cried Ruskin, struggling to get free. This should be a school game on sports day, Elvis said to Sparky. Scalp scratching is such fun. Yes, sir, said Sparky. Suddenly, something fell from Ruskin's pocket and rolled into the gutter. Elvis stopped scratching Ruskin and let him go. What was that? asked Elvis. It looked like gold. Ruskin held his sore head. He wobbled from side to side and although his head hurt so much he could barely think, he knew what had fallen from his pocket and what Elvis was about to pick up. It was Corky's medal. It's mine, Ruskin said faintly. Correction, said Elvis, clutching the medal in his fist. It's mine. Right, Sparky? Yes, sir, said Sparky. Golden light reflected in Elvis's face as he stared at the medal. It glinted in his eyes and made him look quite mad. A medal, Elvis said. I should have a medal. After all, I am a hero. Right, Sparky? Yes, sir, said Sparky. Ruskin made a grab for the medal, but all he managed to catch hold of was the pin. Go away, said Elvis, pushing him. The pin came away in Ruskin's hand. Come on, Sparky, Elvis said. Let's go and break some more windows. And they walked away down Lizard Street. Ruskin stared at the pin in his hands. That's all he had left of Corky's gift. He put the pin in his pocket and went indoors. There's Elvis and Sparky and Ruskin. Poor Ruskin. Chapter 33. His mum and dad were peering through a hole in one of the sheets of newspaper that replaced their window. You saw that, Ruskin said angrily. You saw Elvis scratch my scalp and steal something from me and you didn't do anything to help. You just watched. Best not to interfere, Winston said. Polly Wally doodle all the day, Wendy said, then added kiss. Ruskin sighed and sat down without kissing her. Tea, she asked. No answer. Scrambled eggs on toast? Still no answer. Wendy looked at Ruskin and asked, what's wrong with you? I just don't want to kiss you and I'm not hungry, he replied. That's all. You're still upset about not getting that part you wanted in the school play, Winston said. And as I've said before, that's not my fault. It's not that, Ruskin said. Then what is it? asked Wendy. I don't want to talk about it, Ruskin said, and he rushed up to his room. He lay on his bed, stared at the ceiling and thought about the first time he had spoken to Corky. Chapter 34. Ruskin had walked into the playground with his two best friends, Elvis and Sparky. 
Corky, the new caretaker, was sweeping the playground. The three boys rushed up to Corky. You live on my street, said Ruskin. Your name's Corky Pigeon. That's right, replied Corky. Are you a teacher? asked Elvis. No, said Corky. I'm the new caretaker. What does a caretaker do exactly? asked Sparky. I look after the school, Corky said. I sweep the playground and mend the broken light bulbs and clean all the windows. Alvis looked up at the school. There are a lot of windows, Alvis said. It must take you ages to clean them. Oh yes, Corky said. It takes me ages, my dear boy. Sometimes I wish I never had to clean another window ever again. And from that day, Ruskin and Corky became good friends. They talked about plays and books and the dramas of Shakespeare. Alvin asked Ruskin, why does Corky like you so much? I don't know, Ruskin answered. He just does. He doesn't like me, Alvis said, but I don't care. I think he's a silly, white-haired old man. Soon after that, Corky gave Ruskin a football as a present and Alvis stole the ball and started to grow and everything changed. Ruskin's thoughts of the past were interrupted by someone knocking on the street door. He heard his mum answer it, then call up the stairs. Ruskin, it's for you. No one ever called for Ruskin. At least not since he had stopped being friends with Elvis and Sparky. Ruskin went to the top of the stairs and looked over the landing. Corky was standing at the front door. Hello, my dear boy, he said. Hello. Ruskin said softly. Can I talk to you? asked Corky. A pause. Please, Corky said. Ruskin went downstairs. The two of them sat on the curb outside. Kerk clunk went the drain in front of them. For a while they sat in silence. Then Ruskin noticed that Corky was holding something. He looked closer and saw it was the metal helmet with the torch on. What are you doing with that? asked Ruskin. Are you going into the darkness again? No, replied Corky. This helmet's for you. Oh, so I think Ruskin might get a chance to see the lizard finally. We will find out in the next couple of chapters of Quindlecax. <laughs>